so much for having us here today. It's such a pleasure to have you, of course. I mean, it's so wonderful to be in your space. It's amazing. You know, so I've been with the West Hollywood Tourism Board for about six years now. And I'm amazed that I haven't met you yet because we spend a lot of time talking about the design district. And anytime I talk about the design district, people always bring up your name. So it's amazing and incredible to finally meet you and have a chance to talk with you. Well, thank you. That's very nice to hear that somebody's talking about you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, that's always a good thing. So, it's so great to have you on the Creators Podcast. I mean, obviously, most of our listeners will, will know you from the Bravo show, Million Dollar Decorators. Um, but there's also a lot to your background. I was doing a little bit of deep dive. And oh, it, goodness. No, it's all good stuff. <laughs> Very All deep. Good stuff. Very deep. Exactly. But um, but what's been so interesting is seeing how a bit of your background has led to your career, certainly the show. But I would love to hear a bit more of your story from you. So, I mean, born in the UK. We can pick yes, up on that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's such a mad story in, in a way. You know, I, I never, ever realized that I would end up in this kind of career. Yeah. Um, mm. But I started out at the age of 12 um, with my passion for... I was going to say for collecting. It was really about a passion for making money. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's not bad. <laughs> because because I used to take my, my what well, we call it pocket money in England, my allowance, yes. whatever it was, like 5 or $10 or something at the time, and I would um, run around literally junk shops or, or uh, flea markets and find things that, that I liked, and, mm-hmm. I'd, and I'd spend my bit of allowance on them. And then I eventually I convinced my dad to rent me a stall mm. in uh, an antique market called Greenwich Antique Market on Saturday mornings. And he would drive me there and I was, you know, this little, this little boy of 12, clutching my little bag of goodies that I'd managed to, to buy. This is amazing. And, and I would set them out on my stall yeah. and sort of make them look pretty. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that we'd start at like 7 a.m. And then by about 9 or 10, the coaches would start coming in with all the unsuspecting American tourists. Oh. And so I would spin them a story with my with my pretty cup and saucer or whatever it was I was selling. <laughs> I love that. And um, whatever I bought for three pounds, I was saying for five or five for 10, whatever it was. Anyway, by the end of this, you know, I would come home and I'd made a bunch of money and I'd buy more stuff. That's amazing. And so I did that every weekend from 12 to 16. Wow. Um, and it really and truly... Not only, I mean, I had, I had the best time doing it. It of was course. hilarious. It was so fun. <laughs> but also, I didn't realize at the time that that was my training. Interesting. That is how I learned, you know, how to put two things together and make them look better. Mm-hmm. How to pair color, how to make scale look correct on a table, mm-hmm. how to tablescape, oh. how to determine a, a hallmark or a, or a mark on a piece of china. And understanding the difference between something that's Georgian, something that's Regency, something that's reproduction, something yeah. that's very old. So it was this amazing learning curve, all brought about by my desire to, you know, turn my pocket money in from five to ten. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so literally by the time I was 16, coming up for 17, I decided that I really wanted to be an actor. Mm. My father had been an actor and mm-hmm. been an opera singer when he was younger and so – that theatrical gene was bubbling. Of course. And so I took all my ill-gotten gains uh-huh. from, from, from buying and selling these, uh-huh. the, the, my wares and, <laughs> and I put myself through drama school. Wow. Um, much to the horror of my parents who put me in very expensive private schools mm, to become, course. I don't know, like a... Like an attorney or something, yeah. dreadfully boring. Even though your dad was an actor, he was he was still not. More the reason why they oh, he was like, exactly. why, why, why actors reasons. don't want their kids to be actors. Right. They know. <laughs> they know the truth. And so um, <laughs> I put myself through Covent Garden. And by the time I was sort of 18, 19, I'd started to do some commercials. And I started to model a little bit. Yeah. All those things that sort of come out of, of, of being at drama school. Back yeah. home in London, right? In yeah. London, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I started to work in Paris and... All sorts of stuff started to happen. And then, you know, by the time I was sort of 20, I thought, okay, this is it. I'm going to move to Hollywood. It's time. Obvi- obviously, I'm going to be a movie star. So exactly. I'm, so, I'm, so I'm packing my bag and leaving. And going. So, so I went off and I did a bit more of my uh, uh, 
buying and selling to raise the money to come here. Of course. And I put myself into the Strasbourg here. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar. I studied there as well. Here, here in, here in, mm-hmm. in I Hollywood. I did. In New York as well. Do you as know here. the maddest thing is that, that downstairs in my shop. Yes. Um, here on Melrose. Cynthia, who now works for me, was my scene partner at the Lee Strasberg mm. 31 years ago. Really? Yeah, isn't that wild? That's amazing. That amazing. is amazing. It's a great story. And that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, we did Les Liaisons Dangereux together. Oh my gosh, um, I love And uh, anyway, so cut to, I come to Hollywood, go to Strasberg, end up starving, working in a coffee shop. Yeah, as one like does. completely, you know, <laughs> completely the shattered dream of the, of the Hollywood starlet. Um, <laughs> But eventually I did get cast in a movie where I mm-hmm. played Eartha Kitt's boy toy. Oh. Or toy boy. Oh, we like that. <laughs> and, Flip that and, around. Um, and which was h- hilarious. Yeah. And then I became friendly, totally by coincidence, with one of the producers, a guy called Victor Ginsburg. Yes. And he and his then girlfriend ended up coming to this little tiny house that I had rented. Yeah. Right behind Pavilion's Market. In I West love Hollywood. this story, wow. by the way. Yeah. And they came to, in, the, in, in my little mad thing. And I, and I again, I decorate. I had no money. Yeah, I decorated the whole thing from like the Rose Bowl. You know, it was like all weird bits of things glued together and everything. And they loved it. And he was like, this is amazing. Will you come and decorate my offices? I just got offices in West Hollywood, the Hollywood Filmworks, the 9000 building on Sunset. Incredible. And will you come and do the offices? And so I thought, well, hang on. I have no idea what I'm doing, yeah. but maybe he'll put me in another movie. So <laughs> I'm heading up there with a tape measure. I love so, that. I love that. So so I go and, and I decorate these offices. Yeah. And it was this sort of, again, it was mostly from the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Um, palm trees yeah. and, and weird Indian doors I hung on the wall and yeah. old beaten up club chairs. It was very kind of Casablanca comes to Hollywood yeah. via the Rose Bowl <laughs> with a little bit of a little bit of gay fabric and flowers thrown around. Love this. And um and literally the day it was finished, yeah. a lady called Liz Heller called. Okay. She called me and said, um, Victor Ginsburg gave me your number. I've just been to the Hollywood Filmworks. Mm. I love it. Would you come and look at my offices? Yeah. <clears throat> she said, I'm in the Capitol building. Spin English, I was like, the Capitol building? Is that the White House? I was like, so oh, know, utterly confused. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course, if you don't know. Um, and anyway, I got there and of course it was the iconic, uh, circular, extraordinary yes. tower that that was the hub of, of Capitol Music. Mm-hmm. And so- Shaped and Liz, like records. Shaped like records. And Liz just happened to be the executive president. It just happened to and be. And her office happened to be Frank Sinatra's old office. Mm. Oh, and wow. so I walked in and she was like, I love what you've done there. Can you help me with my office and yes. my house? And I thought, hang on a minute. I've always wanted to be a pop star. Yeah. So maybe now, <laughs> maybe. Maybe now maybe I'll decorate true. for Liz and she'll, and she'll give me a recording contract. By the way, I love that every time you were doing these initial projects, you were like, well, maybe, maybe yeah. I'll be in another movie. <laughs> well, well, maybe I'll become a pop star. But always looking for the other angle. Of course. And so, um, and so anyway, Liz and I, I hit it off immediately. Yeah. And then I started to work for her and a month into it, she was getting married mm-hmm. and the day before her wedding, her, her wedding planner went completely, I think her wedding planner OD'd or something, went oh, completely no. off the rails. <laughs> you know, very in yes. true Hollywood style. In yeah, very right. true Hollywood style. And so style. Liz like called me in a panic and, and, and I kind of said, oh, I'll come help you. And I, I ran down t- downtown, I bought like giant bags of rose petals and nice. things. I had no idea what I was doing. No, wow. uh, is that what you do normally? And at, and at the time, I'd never even heard of a hooper. They were getting married under a hooper oh, in the garden. Okay. I had never heard of it. I had no idea what it was. It ended up looking like Scarlett O'Hara's skirt. It was like completely mad. It was tulle and shit all over it. Oh my God. Anyway, they loved it. That's, that's it, important. They loved it. And it ended up um, <laughs> that Lizzie's father was Seymour Heller, who had been Liberace's manager for his whole life. So a little camp... Uh, Hooper went down pretty well with that with that crowd. You got so lucky. Yeah, yeah, and it ended up being you know a major Hollywood wedding filled with all all, all sort of the A list stars, and I was invited to stay. And I sat next to Cheryl Teagues, mm. the world's first ever and, supermodel. Of course. And by the end of the wedding, she had hired me, and nine months later, we were on six magazines around the world. And this my is design incredible. Career was born. Oh my gosh, I have the, I have chills listening yeah, to this it's because it's a series of one 
like it's obviously like this is just meant to be because it was a series of one happy circumstance after another, you know, these happy accidents that just, it yeah, leads it, you to where you need to be. It was a wild story. I always say it was a Hollywood story in reverse because, yes. you know, coming here thinking, you know, wanting to be a star and then ending up, I mean, I literally spent one month where I was so poor, I had one Tootsie Roll a day. <gasps> no. From the 7-Eleven, I would go in and buy my one Tootsie Roll and I'd eat a little bit every day. Oh, I could do with wow. that diet now, actually, well, by the way. But, <laughs> that could be a whole new thing, the Tootsie Roll diet. The Tootsie Roll diet, it's a whole wow. Book. Yeah. That would have been my fourth book. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, you know, so, I mean, there was a lot of hard work went into it and there's been a lot of hard work to maintain this career oh my gosh, since. Of course. But the journey has been extraordinary, the way one thing evolved into another, into another. Well, that's when you know you're doing the right thing, you so, know? Yeah, I mean, f I, I really believe in fate. Yeah. Actually, in the way that, you know, our life unfolds. I, 100%. I think that, that, and mine was apparently, you know, always meant to be this. And then all the different experiences that you have that, you know, you might be having a certain experience, you know, for example, you know, go, going to acting school and studying all of that, and then how that is incorporated into your career now and understanding how, just presence or picking up on certain things, tonality. I mean, it's all a different form of expression totally. and, and art. So it's, it's really neat to see how it's just, it's created a life of its own. Yeah. Well, and like you said, even starting at 12, 12 through 16, just having that, it was obviously in your DNA that yep. that was going to become something that was part of your life. Totally. Forward. Totally, totally. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been amazing. And of course the acting training really helped mm -hmm. because, because, you know, when you are presenting your ideas, mm -hmm. your storyboards, your look for somebody's home, you are putting on a show. You are. You are doing the tap dance. Exactly. And so, thank God I was trained to tap dance. Oh, God. And so, and I, so I it's say really that to helped. myself every morning when I wake up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so it's been an amazing part of it. And then, obviously, the evolution is, as my career went on. And yeah. I think because I started out with a celebrity that, it, you know, once you do one, all the others start to happen. Of course. Because people trust you and they... They, you know, they love the work, but they also trust you and they it, know that trust you can, is a big you can be factor. part of that circle and not, you know, Get screw weird. people over. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, straight away from Cheryl, it ended up being, I mean, my first interview from her was Sigourney Weaver. Mm. And then, you know, within a year, we, I was doing uh, Christina Aguilera and Edward Norton and... You and know, so fun because they're also so different. All so uh, different. And, and all different ages. Exactly. It's been amazing. Exactly. Right. What would you say, if if you can even narrow it down to one, these are always tough questions, but um, so knowing that, but then also knowing all, you know, of of your work and what you've worked on from, you know, private residences to hotels, is there a place that stands out as maybe something that you're the most proud of? People keep asking me this question you know, because I had this new book coming out, everybody's yeah. like, oh, what's your favorite project? What's yeah. your favorite project? And the problem is, you know, it's just like, I guess it's just like being a mother. Your, <laughs> yes. your favorite child is the one you've just had. Yeah, Although course. you don't want to admit that to anybody. No. But, it, you know, it tends to be. That's your of new course. favorite. And so for me, you know, I mean, currently, we just finished RuPaul's House, mm -hmm. which is this sort of unbelievable explosion of high camp glamour, Hollywood Regency fabulosity. Yes. And so, you know. I mean, as it should be. As, as it as damn it well should be. Exactly. <laughs> and, snap, snap. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, it's not very often in, in someone's career that you get to design a ballroom yeah. that contains 26 spinning uh, disco balls, some of which are six feet round. Oh my goodness, so, this sounds like heaven. So, yes, absolutely. <laughs> you better work. Yeah. So, so that was, um, so that's been like a really fun project. And Rue's been a very dear friend of mine for years. Yeah. So, to get to do that was amazing. And also, that was a, it's, it's a seven bedroom mansion yeah. in, in Beverly Hills Oof. that is now a one bedroom. 6,000 square foot closeted house oh. housing over 3,000 ball gowns. Oh, wow. Fantastic. And very large shoes. Uh, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I did see it. In, I meant to bring my architectural digest to have you sign it today because that's oh. where 
we, you know, we first started talking, we got to get Martin on. Yeah, the podcast. amazing. And so that was, I think, just June of this last yeah, year. Where yeah, that was featured, right? So it was a congratulations massive, on that. That's massive amazing. cover. The power yeah. of RuPaul is amazing. Where do you get your inspiration from? Because obviously. Uh, you know, every interior and every design that you work on is so different because obviously you're reflecting whether it's a resident and it's whoever it might be for. Yeah. Or even so, where are you drawing your inspiration from? Well, I mean, as we sit here in my <laughs> library with with my two thousand design books, That's there's a lot of inspiration cool. sitting of here. Of course. But um, you know, inspiration for me always comes from travel. Mm. I think seeing new places, mm -hmm. meeting new people, smelling new smells, mm -hmm. seeing new colors. I mean, you know, you can go to India and you can look at a bowl of fruit yeah. where there's, you know, the purplest of plums with, yes. the, with the palest of orange uh, little kumquats and the way they mix all these things together and suddenly you're like, oh my God, those colors are amazing for a new fabric. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that should be Ellen Pompeo's bedroom or mm -hmm. look at that weird window. Maybe that will be the new headboard for Cher. So, all those things, you know, always becomes part of the inspiration. Of course. Um, and so for me, travel is everything. I really find it to be wildly inspiring. And by the way, as I say to young designers, travel doesn't mean you've got to fly first class to Paris. <laughs> no, not travel at all. Travel means you can buy a ticket and take a, take a, you know, take a bus mm -hmm. from here to, to Carpinteria. Of course. And find something that's going to be wildly inspirational. Mm -hmm. So it's just about being open. In that curiosity. Curiosity. Life is about being a sponge. It is. You've got to soak everything in. You've yes. got to squeeze the sponge occasionally. Yes, of but, course. <laughs> um, but, you know, you need to soak it all in. No, I always say travel is a state of mind because, you know, if you are open to it, it's something that you can discover something new even in your own neighborhood. And oh, it's just having that curiosity. Oh my God. We are in West Hollywood. Yes. You can, you can take a two-minute walk just on along this stretch here mm -hmm. and see some of the most incredible design internationally acclaimed design mm -hmm. within within blocks within three blocks yes so uh, you know even even in my own shop downstairs there are things from almost every country in the world for sale next door to us we have Soho home that has now got these amazing new collections that are sort of inspired by french art deco restoration harbor next door yes. rh is, is filled with these sort of luxe uber glam mm -hmm. moments Banana Republic Home just opened literally oh, next door to me. That's right. Which is also has this wonderful, very exotic, very sexy, laid back yeah. experience that they've just done. It's sort of Moorish. Mm -hmm. That's just the four shops next to me. Yes. And that's just in, you know, the, the very tip of this extraordinary district. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, travel isn't just about getting on a plane. It, it, we can walk two doors and be inspired. We, I tell everyone when they come to West Hollywood, walk. Yes. Come yes. here and just walk, walk the streets of Melrose, walk, uh, walk Robertson, La Cienega, La Cienega, Robertson, yeah. absolutely, Melrose Santa Monica. Place. Every everything is so alive with a unique kind of spirit to absolutely. it, right? That absolutely. is unique to this place. Yeah, it's incredible. So, what uh, inspired you to? I mean, this is your atelier here. Yes. You know? So, what inspired you to have it here in, you know, on Melrose in West Hollywood? Well, West Hollywood has been the hub of my career always. Mm -hmm. You know, I've literally, my, my office has been within a half mile radius right here for 31 years, ever since I've been, you know, in design. Yeah. This is actually my 30th year as an interior designer. Right now, middle of September mm -hmm. of this year is my beginning of my 30th year anniversary of having, well, my, own, having my own business. Are we doing a big party or what's Here was, Oh, we are going to do <laughs> a big party. I'll bring the disco balls. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> um, and so, um, so I've always been here. Yeah. Because it is full of energy, mm -hmm. there is a light that sparkles here, yeah. meaning it's not just from the sun. It emanates from the people that live here. It's, true. it's within all the businesses more than any other part of Los Angeles, this is a, an alive, throbbing, pulsating heart of this extraordinary city that we mm -hmm. live in. It is the heart, for me, it's the heart of Los Angeles. And so uh, for any creative, there's so much extraordinary th energy here. Mm -hmm. But also we have the best restaurants. Yes. You've got the great selection of hotels. There's amazing fashion. You know, it's all here. So 
that to me feeds me on every single level. Oh, you mentioned a little bit about your book. Let's talk about it because it's yeah, it's coming out. Star and style. And this is your third book. It is my third book. I yes. believe it's coming out October 17th. So uh, Available on Amazon right now. Amazon, <laughs> pre-sale. Okay. Ding. We'll be sure to have a link right here for you to go ahead and we save We take all major credit cards. Yes, we do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that little 12-year-old boy wanting to make money has He's not gone away, right? He's still here. Yeah. He's still here. He's still here. Why is it No, so, so yeah, it's, it was time to do another book. Mm -hmm. I really wanted a book to celebrate my 30-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, this book, because my career has been so... Uh, celebrity centric. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really important to highlight some of those extraordinary people that yeah. have allowed me into their lives, that have allowed me to decorate for them and and, and helped, you know, bring their style to life. Mm -hmm. And so um, the book celebrates that, hence the title Star Style. I love that. Um, uh, and it, it's filled with like wonderful anecdotes and, and great little tales of everybody and how we got to where their design is and what their inspiration was. And there's so much to take away from it, you know, so the reader themselves can find their own star style. I, that's um, so great. Uh, well, so I love this, um, sort of like in the in the spirit of this show, the creators, I mean, th there's also something to be said for West Hollywood. You know, it yes. seems to be this fruitful ground that creatives, entrepreneurs, all of these in individuals can really blossom here. What, what, do you... I mean, I presume you feel the same way. What do you think that it is about West Hollywood that makes it so this fertile ground for creators such as yourself? So one of my best friends lives in New York and is, a, is another designer. Mm -hmm. And he says that when he comes here to LA and particularly to West Hollywood, he gets so much more inspired. He sees so many more things. He said the products that may be the same thing in New York look different here. Yeah. That is because of the light. Yes. I swear it because we have this light that makes you feel good, that mm. really energizes mm. us. When we live here, I think we take it for granted. Oh, we definitely the do. The second you leave, you realize, oh my God, what happened to our amazing light? Yeah. So it's that light and that energy that really helps here to make the design sparkle more and yeah. give us even more inspiration. And that's also why I think there are so many creatives that flock to West Hollywood. Absolutely. To become inspired and to experience that, there is an energy here that I think is nowhere else. Yeah, I agree completely. And it, it just, it, it's palpable. One of, our, one of our strategic lines at the Visitors Bureau is that West Hollywood is where you come to experience freedom of the heart. Mm. Mm. And I think that that's true. That's kind of the spirit that you're talking about. It's like people come here to kind of realize their dreams. They have a dream. And there's also this kind of spirit and energy or a pixie dust, as I always call it, like something, <laughs> there's something, you call it the light. And there's I a think lot that, of I fairy dust true. in West there, there, Hollywood. Yes, well, that's true too. Yes. That's yeah. a pixie dust, correct, yes. That's true, yeah. <laughs> but somehow it, um, it inspires people to actually achieve. Oh, 100%. And it allows people to achieve. I think mm -hmm. it's a spirit of, of, you know, we really want to see that happen. Yeah. We want to see innovation. We want to see new things happen yeah. here. And people expect that of us. And, and honestly... You know, West Hollywood is really the real Hollywood, mm -hmm. meaning that mm -hmm. you can walk down the street, we could go for lunch now, and we're going to see a major movie star. Of course. You're you're surrounded yeah. by the Hollywood, the star, the celebrity. This it's is everywhere. Everybody's it's everywhere. hanging out. Exactly. Exactly. You walk into my shop every day. There's there, there's a, there's another major star comes it's where in. Where they're to buy working something. out. It's where they're getting a coffee. You go to the gym. We get yes. we go to our coffee shop. You know, you're standing next to Brad Pitt. It yeah. just is what happens because everybody either lives here or comes here mm -hmm. for their for their for their fashion or their cappuccino or whatever it is. Yeah. And so you've also got that amazing. Oh, I know. Which is which yeah. exists nowhere else in the world. Exactly. That star power, that star style, ladies and gentlemen, yes. is here <laughs> in, Coming soon in, to Amazon. In, in West Hollywood. <laughs> and it is one of the other things that makes it amazing yeah. and sparkly and exciting. And totally inspirational. Yes. Uh, so I love this. Uh, let's let's. I do this thing playing favorites. Okay. We like to play favorites, even though it's always tough. I'm to only do. playing if I'm your favorite. Yeah, okay. Well, you are one hundred. <laughs> you, you are my favorite. <laughs> Hands down, you're my favorite. But um, but playing favorites. So if you describe like an ideal, maybe night out or well, a day in West Hollywood, night out, where uh, maybe a place to stay overnight. In your case, maybe a staycation. How would you describe that? What, if playing favorites, what, what would be like an ideal day? I, 
luckily, I'm a, um, a member of the San Vicente Bungalows, which is a private members Fabulous. club. That has opened up. On, we are a on, fan. Right here. And, you know, the food's delicious. The ambiance is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, it has, you know, a very wild West Hollywood history in its background. Um, it was originally a bathhouse in yes. a way. And now it is, you know, the most expensive private club in, in the city, which is a fantastic, yeah. you know, evolution and um, and that it's an um, that's a really beautiful spot. Mm-hmm. I have to say, they have a little hotel attached. They do across the street, yeah, which is really charming. Called mm-hmm. the Eight Fifty. Mm-hmm. Called the Eight Fifty, mm-hmm. and a, a lot of my friends, a lot of my New Yorkers, love to come and stay there. And of course, mm-hmm. then they get a little bit of use of the club and stuff. Yes. But that's really fun. That's a really nice new spot. Yeah. But anyway, for me, that I love that as a lunch spot. I know that not everybody can go there because of the club aspect. Of but that's really fun. It's but anybody great. can stay at the 850. Uh, totally and, and, they can. And it's walkable mm. to everything. Totally, there, totally. So, it's, yeah. it's, which is really, really great. And then, you know, as a designer, you know, my afternoons are usually filled with going and seeing people's new inventory. Oh, nice. Um, again, La Cienega is filled with amazing stores. Incredible stores. Incredible antique stores, incredible design. Mm-hmm. We've got amazing fabric uh, retailers there up and down the street. Yes. Um, and, you know, there are vendors there from Paris. There are vendors from Afghanistan. There, I mean, it's just wild. It's this great cornucopia, a great cocktail yes. of design. And so you can spend, you know, a couple of hours easily wandering up and down there and finding some amazing, great mm-hmm. things. So, um, I mean, anything. So obviously you've got the book, but anything else exciting that you have working on that's in the pipeline that you want to maybe share with us that we can keep our eyes peeled well, for? Well, yeah, I mean... We've got so many fabulous, fun projects on the go right now. I mean, you know, amazing stuff from... I'm doing a a home for Sylvester Stallone and his wife Jennifer Flavin right now. That's exciting. Which is fantastic. He is the most hilarious, most fabulous man. Really, really enjoying that. Um, we're working for like Machine Gun Kelly, cool. so kind of a little rock and roll madness. That's so fun. In the mix, we've got... Um, uh, I'm doing another house for my longtime and beloved client, Ellen Pompeo. Yes. Um, and so we've got some really fun, very mixed projects. Mm-hmm. Um, doing something fresh with with Gwen Stefani, who is another client of mine that I just love. Mm-hmm. Her and Blake Shelton are... Oh, that must be fun to work on oh my with God, the two of them they are and the those best. personalities. I have never seen two people so in love. Mm. Kind of makes you jealous, actually. Oh, it's amazing. They're so, so cute. So cute and gorgeous. So, yeah, so we've got a bunch of really great projects in that going on. Amazing. We've got some, um, I'm doing a new restaurant for Master Chef Rick Bayless. Ooh, yes. Um, and uh, working on a bunch of the residences in the Four Seasons here mm-hmm. in Los Angeles that um, I have designed that building and everything. And now we're actually doing some of the, the half floors for the oh, tenants. fantastic. And so that's been really chic and fun. Oh, amazing. To kind of get to really see, not only did I design the building and all the public spaces, but now to get inside and create the interiors for the people that actually live in it. Oh, that is That's great. been a lot of fun. And only a few blocks away too. Only so. a few blocks away, yeah. So Incredible. so right in the heart of all of our art district. Yes. And so that's been really amazing. And, and I'm also, which I love, which is quirky, but I love it. Mm-hmm. I'm designing a bookstore. What? Yeah. This is great. Where I is know. this going to be? It's, it's actually going to be in Summerland. Okay. Which is a you know up towards Santa Barbara. Yeah. Um, it's going to be high design and it'll also sell beautiful decorative objects, and it will have amazing um, book openings and readings and events and people like Oprah have agreed to to do all their book. Oh, events there. So this is so good. It's going to be amazing. So the, you know that's a quirky thing. Yeah. In my design. But Ethos you've got right so now. much going on. I love that. And I love the idea yeah. of it. You're able to like get inspiration off of all these different projects. So yeah. it's, it's it's pretty thrilling, I have to say. Like it's really exciting to just hear everything that you've got working that in the work. So um, I'm at the edge of my seat, waiting <laughs> to find out what'll be next. So I'm well, gonna first yeah. of all, I'll be ordering the book. Well, so. thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I have been so lucky in my career that. I have gotten to do so many different things Mm -hmm. from restoring a 12th century castle to creating, you know, a a studio 54 disco like environment for Tommy Hilfiger in in Miami. You know, we've gotten to do everything from the most modern to the most ancient, from Mm -hmm. the most restorative to the most inventive. And I, my work, and you'll see it, it, you know, when you get my book 
is extremely different. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that looks the same. Everything is very customized, very individualized to each and every client, to each and every project, to each and every location. It is all a one-off experience. And that to me is the thing that keeps me inspired. It keeps me excited. It keeps my office's energy bubbling. Mm -hmm. We don't stamp out the same design. We don't do one thing and give it to you, your friend and their mate. That's not for me. Yeah. A lot of excitement. I want I want every day to be inventing new or reinventing the old. Yeah. Or, you know, just being inspired to capture your personality and give you your dream home. Mm-hmm. It's not my dream home, it's your dream home. Mm-hmm. And I want to be able to extract that from you and create that. And that is the essence of who I am, what I do, and why I live in West Hollywood. This is amazing i have chills yeah i have chills really great. <laughs> yes thank you so much for oh. spending the time with us and thank you for what you're doing here and uh you know what you bring to the design district and what you bring to the spirit of the place it's really amazing being part My of pleasure. this cultural hub so thank you for today I, I swear i could talk to you forever 